The Ford Dealers of America present The Fred Allen Show. The Fred Allen Show with Fred's guests Leo DeRocha, Portland Hoffa, Minerva Pius, Peter Donald, Parker Fenley, the DeMarco Sisters, and Al Goodman and his orchestra. And this is Kenny Delmar speaking for your friendly Ford dealer. He's the expert on Fords in your neighborhood. He's the one who knows your Ford best. It stands to reason that he's the man to service your Ford. He has special equipment to do the job right. His mechanics are Ford trained in factory approved methods. He has genuine Ford parts. So for an expert job done promptly, it pays to bring your Ford back home for service. Ladies and gentlemen, to observe daylight saving time, today all clocks were moved ahead one hour. Tonight, we bring you the man of the hour, the hour the country lost. He's Fred Allen. Thank you, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In Portland, I'm glad you mentioned that mildly amusing uh, bit that you did about daylight saving time. When the clocks are moved ahead, does that make everybody an hour younger? An hour younger? Yes, it does. If you had a grandfather clock, and you moved it ahead enough hours, the grandfather clock would become a little boy clock with a small face and dirty hands. You'd have to move it ahead an awful lot. Daylight. Wait, now, wait, just because your lines don't get lashed, you know. <laughs> Daylight saving spoiled Mama's cuckoo clock. Really? How? The cuckoo doesn't know what time it is. Really? What makes you think so? Today at 12 o'clock, the cuckoo came out and just shrugged its wings. <laughs> if you think you're <laughs> I saw a man come out of the Audubon Society And do the same thing <laughs> If you I think he was cuckoo too But he <laughs> If you think If you think your cuckoo is confused You should see Misha Hour today He doesn't even know who he is <laughs> Say I uh, I just happened <laughs> We have awfully slow acoustics in here <laughs> I must speak to Mr. Trammell to have the acoustics <laughs> stepped up in here. Say, uh, Portland, I just, uh, <laughs> I just happened to think, Jack Eigen. What is that? Well, Jack Eigen only <laughs> listens to our program until he hears his name. Now, he asked me to mention his name early tonight. He has to go over to the circus. <laughs> He's doing a, a special broadcast from inside Gargantua's cage. <laughs> After the show, Gargantua is going over to the Coper, I think, for Jack's anniversary. It looks like a big night with fur on at the Coper. <laughs> Tell me, Portland. Wait till I get Gargantua to check his coat. Wait till they try. <laughs> Tell me, Portland. Tell me, Portland. What's in the <laughs> What's in the news this week? The subway fare is going to be raised to ten cents. I wonder why they're raising the subway fare. Well, Mama says they're trying to keep out the riffraff. Well, they should. They should. <laughs> The subway really could use a better class of people. It's going to cost ten cents to come from Jackson Heights. And it's going to be worth it. <laughs> Have you heard the new subway jingle? Really? What is the subway jingle? The subway fare is now a dime. Commuters think it is a crime. The good old days are forever lost. When a ride in the subway only costs a nickel, 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 nickel. That's nickel. very good. <laughs> I must say, you are in rare voice tonight. Do you think I'll ever sing at the Met? Not inside, no. <laughs> Tell me, what, uh, what, else is, uh, what else is hot in the news? Well, Kathleen Windsor, who wrote Forever Amber, is divorcing her husband, Artie Shaw. Yeah, they say she's writing a sequel to Forever Amber. A sequel? It's called Temporarily Artie. <laughs> I, uh, since I don't hear any cries, I don't hear any cries of author, author from people waiting to, wanting the name of the man who wrote that joke, I think I shall start for Alan's Alley. What is your question tonight? Well, a new book called The Treasury of American Superstitions has been compiled by Claudia Delise. It contains every superstition you have ever heard of, Portland. And so, being in the mood for superstitions, our question is, how do you feel about superstitions? <laughs> 
Shall we go? As the Chinese teapot said to the auctioneer's hammer, I'm going, going, I'm gone. <laughs> It's good to get back to Allen's Alley, Portland. I guess the senator's having mule meat for dinner. There's something braying in the barbecue pit. Oh, well, let's not. Somebody, I say, somebody tapped my trellis. Oh, it's you, Jughead. Yes, Senator. Well, let's go, son. As the two men said when they was inventing bubble gum, let's make it snappy. But, you know, I'm busier. I'm busier than a handkerchief during a Betty Davis picture. Uh, I'm working on Senator Taft's housing bill. Everybody today is trying to get into a new house. But, uh, Even Senator Taft. Senator Taft is trying to get into a new house? Yeah, the White House. <laughs> you don't get it, do you, son? No. You ought to give your head to a bone bank. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute, sir. Take it easy with those innuendos, Senator. Tell me, what's, uh, what's new? Well, I was up in New York attending that newspaper publisher's convention. The newspaper? Uh, confidentially, son, uh, don't let this get around. No. I never read the newspapers, only the funnies. The comics, eh? Yeah, well, my favorite is Joe Palooka. Joe Palooka. When eh? I was a young sprout, I used to dress like Joe Palooka. Yeah? Used to talk like Joe Palooka. Yeah. Used to walk like Joe Palooka. Gosh. When I'd strut down the street, everybody would say, there goes that Palooka. Uh, <laughs> and they can still say that today, Senator. I'm honored, son. Well, tell me, Senator, how do you feel about American superstition? Well, son, down where I come from, we've got one superstition. And that superstition is? That a drink of whiskey will cure a snake bite. I see. For 20 years, every morning when I get up, I drink a full tumbler of whiskey. Every morning. Every noon before dinner, I drink another full tumbler of whiskey. Every noon. Every night before going to bed, I drink a full tumbler of whiskey. You've been drinking whiskey for 20 years? Have you ever been bitten by a snake, Senator? Not yet, son. No? But the first snake that bites me is going to find me well prepared. So long. So long. I hope the snake is as well fortified as the senator. Yeah, I wonder if Mr. Moody's around. Howdy, Bob. <laughs> Mr. Moody, you uh, you look a little tired. Yeah, last night I was up till all hours. Oh, uh, really? Must have been nine o'clock before I got to bed. <laughs> And then this morning I didn't wake up till five o'clock. Five o'clock? Well, the whole forenoon was gone. <laughs> what, um, what kept you up so late? Oh, a uh, Townsend Club had to do. Oh, really? What, uh, <laughs> what was the entertainment? The first act was a fellow in yellow bell brigands and bare feet. An acrobat? Yeah, he kept skinning the cat for 20 minutes. Oh, I see. <laughs> Next, two fellas come on dressed in blood-red tuxedos. Yes. They played Chinatown, My Chinatown on musical bottles. Say, this was, this was some show. The grand how-to-do in climax was Miss Mona Huckabee. Yeah. Miss Huckabee, she gave an exciting description of a honeysuckle bloom unfolding and opening up that she'd spied on through a magnifying glass. <laughs> hey, you, uh, you had some evening. I'd think twice before I'd go through it again. Well, uh, Mr. Moody, what about these American superstitions? Why, some of them make sense, some don't. Well, how do you mean? Well, some people think keeping a whale in a closet is bad luck. Yes, that's, uh, that's true. <laughs> and a family I know, they wouldn't open an umbrella in the house. They said that was bad luck. Really? One spring it rained, 32 straight days and nights. Yeah? Rain started pouring through the roof down inside the house. They wouldn't raise an umbrella? No. Whole family was drowned. What do you mean? <laughs> well, tell me, Titus, do you have any superstitions? Why, I ain't decided. No. Last summer, last summer I nailed a horseshoe up over my front door to bring me good luck. And it did. What, uh, what happened? Why, one night lightning struck the metal horseshoe. Yes. My house burnt to the ground. But how were you lucky? I wasn't home. So long. Oh, <laughs> let's uh, let's try this next door. Howdy, Jeffy. Ah, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Nussbaum. I see you have your gold wedgies on. I'm practically only now, this minute, from the theater returning. Really? What? Uh, <laughs> what play did you see? Max Death. Max Beck. <laughs> uh, it is written by Jake Spear. Jake Spear. Are you, uh... Are you... Are 
Are you a, a Shakespeare fan? Then I am attending by Mrs. Biberman the finishing school, a young chit. Uh-huh. I'm starting. I'm starting with the dramatics club in Max Beth. Oh, really? What, uh, what part did you play in Macbeth? With long hair, also one tooth, I am a witch. Oh, a witch? <laughs> doubling, doubling, toil with troubling, fire, brain, also cauldron, bubbling. From the play of the same name. That's very good. That's very good. Mrs. Biberman is saying that closing the eyes, you are not knowing me from Morris Evans. I can say that. <laughs> well, Mrs. Nussbaum, how do you, uh, how do you feel about superstitions? Oh, walking under a mirror, breaking a ladder, throwing over the shoulder saltines. I'm laughing. Do, uh, do you recall any specific instances where you have flouted superstition? Last October. Uh, what happened? It's an old superstitious. A black cat is crossing the path. It's coming bad luck. Bad luck. With Pierre, I am out driving. Yes. Is crossing the path three black cats. Three black cats. We are hitting them. One, two, three. And the bad luck? The black cat is having the bad luck. And you? I am having a new fur coat. Oh, my God. And that brings us to the Ajax Cassidy, Sandy. Let's pass the time of day with Mr. Cassidy. Well, Mr. Cassidy. Well, Mr. Cassidy, what about these superstitions? I mean, boy, superstitions are not to be taken lightly. No? When the supernatural is flaunted, dire are the consequences that can ensue. You know of a specific case, eh, Jack? I do, I do. It was three on a match put Balzac Brannigan in the hospital. Three on a match? Well, now, you see, Balzac was at the circus. Yes. And the Siamese twins was just lighting two cigarettes. Uh-huh. Balzac stepped up. And asked the Siamese twins for the light. I see. Well, after he got the light, Balzac started to walk between the Siamese twins. He was stopped. I see. Balzac says, whatever it is, let it down, boys. I've got to get through. <laughs> let it... <laughs> yeah? Well, a, a fight started. Yes? One of the Siamese twins was arrested, the other one got away, and Balzac came to in the accident ward. <laughs> Say, there must be something to those superstitions. Oh, there is, there is. Now, you take Nocco Nolan, the waiter. What happened to Nocco, the waiter? Well, now, all his life, to ward off rheumatism, yeah. Nocco carried an acorn in his pocket. An acorn? When he finally died, Nocco, the waiter, was buried in his waiter's suit with the acorn still in his pocket. Uh-huh. Twenty years later, what happened? What? Out of Nocco, the waiter's grave, there grew a giant oak tree. A giant oak tree. And the oak tree had on a tuxedo coat and a dicky. <laughs> Are you superstitious, eh, Jack? Oh, I am, me boy. I'm convinced the number 13 is unlucky. What makes you think so? Well, 13 has caused me to disappear at frequent intervals for periods of 30 days. 13? 12 jurymen and a judge. Good night. <laughs> We've had enough fun. We're ready now for the DeMarco song. And so, the five DeMarco sisters and Maestro Goodman add up to April showers. Girls? <laughs>
And now, ladies and gentlemen... Oh, Fred. Yes, Kenny? Senator Claghorn is outside to see you. Senator Claghorn? I just left him a little while ago. Send him in. All right. Right this way, Senator. Yes, come right in, Senator Claghorn. Well, howdy. I say howdy, son. Have a cigar. Well, thanks, Senator. Say, what's the big idea carrying that tree trunk with you? Well, son, I'm aiming to make some stump speeches. I'm campaigning. Uh, campaigning? Oh, that explains this free cigar, then. Uh. Say, what's this writing on the band? A vote for Claghorn is a vote for Ford trucks. Well, that's my slogan, son. It's sweeping the country. The new Ford trucks? They're drawing the crowd, son. Everybody wants that bonus. You are giving a bonus? Ford trucks are giving the bonus. They're bonus built. Built extra strong to last longer, that is. Well, tell me, Senator, isn't this something new in politics, building a platform around trucks? Well, son, when I heard there were 139 models in the new Ford truck line, I started thinking. Thinking what? When I heard how truck drivers were raving about the comfort of Ford's new million-dollar cab, I made up my mind. You're setting up campaign headquarters at your Ford dealers? I'm doing better than that, son. I'm yeah. turning in my old bandwagon for a new Ford truck. So long, son. So long, so long, so long that again, is. Senator. So long. <laughs> For listeners who feel that a little music goes a long way, we have just offered a few bars of But Beautiful, played by Maestro Al Goodman and his they knew Vaughn Monroe when he was only a schmo orchestra. <laughs> and now, ladies... Uh, yes, Portland? Who is our guest tonight? Well, we haven't any guests, Portland. No guests? That is one of the things that is wrong with radio today. Every program has refrigerators and guests. But... Guests are guests. Guests, guests are... Radio has too many guests. I heard a guest on Mary Margaret McBride's program the other day. He brought a guest with him. Well, while Mary was interviewing her guest, the guest was interviewing his guest. <laughs> it uh, was very confusing. Mr. Bohack uh, objected, I heard later. But last week, you said Leo DeRocher was coming tonight. Leo DeRocher is the reason I am finished with guests, Portland. The trouble I had with that Leo DeRocher... What happened? Well, last Thursday, I was walking along 50th Street. Just as I passed Peg Waffington's tea shop, the door opened, and I heard a voice say... Hello, Fred. Leo DeRocher. <laughs> Leo, what are you doing coming out of Peg Waffington's tea shop? I just finished my lesson. Your lesson in a tea shop? Yes, I have a tutor. I'm studying the theory and proper technique of drinking tea. Tea? Fred, do you know when you finish your tea, you're not supposed to squeeze the wet tea bag out between your fingers? <laughs> you're n no? What, uh, what do you do? Well, when you're finished, you pick the tea bag up in the sugar tongs and press it gently. <laughs> but, Leo... Fred, you know what I learned today? What? You drink tea out of the cup. The cup? What do you do? What do you do with the saucer? Well, if your tea is too hot to drink, you fan it with your saucer. Oh, wait a minute, Leo. Leo, what is this tea routine? Well, you have to know these things, old boy, when you're in the literary set. The lit <laughs> you are in the you are in the literary set? Yes, Fred. Uh, I just wrote a book. A book? It's called The Dodgers and Me. The Dodgers and me. Well, in Boston, of course, it's called The Dodgers and I. Oh, naturally. <laughs> but, Leo, how did you ever happen to write a book? Well, uh, last year, Fred, I had a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> I know. Uh, and I read that Babe Ruth was writing a book, and it, it gave me an idea. Oh, so you started to write a book, too. I wrote Day and Night for Six Months. And, uh, and when you finished? I had a sentence 300 pages long. <laughs> One sentence was 300 pages long? Uh, the, the publisher made me go back and break it up into paragraphs. Then he showed me what periods, commas, and hyphens were and told me to punctuate it. And, uh, when the book was finished? I had 200 commas, 30 periods, and one hyphen left over. <laughs> one hyphen, eh? I finally got rid of the hyphen. How? I stood the hyphen up on end and used it for an exclamation point. Good, good. <laughs> well, Fred, I must dash. I'll be late for my etiquette class. Etiquette class? Oh, yes. Uh, attending all these literary teas, I can't afford to commit a faux pas. Oh, you're polishing your manners? Oh, I'm also learning my knives and forks. Oh, fine. Fred, 
You know that little fork uh, way down at the end of the forks? Yes. That's for eating oysters. No kidding. An oyster fork? For 30 years, I've been eating oysters with a spoon. <laughs> Gosh. Last night, my homework was correct napkin usage. Correct. Correct napkin usage. The napkin is supposed to be unfurled and tossed casually on the lap. Oh. Well, I used to stuff my napkin down in my collar. Oh, and now that your napkin is in your lap, my shirt is loaded with gravy. <laughs> you're, a, you're a mess, eh? Well, I'm a slob, but I'm correct. <laughs> Take my advice. Stay a slob. What do you want with etiquette and writing books? Why, you're one of the best managers in baseball. Ah, but I'm thinking of my future, Fred. That's why I became an author. Why? Well, George Bernard Shaw is 92 years old, and he's still writing, isn't he? Yes. When a baseball player is 92, where is he? Where? He's pitching for the Giants. <laughs> Leo, I wonder if you... Uh... Oh, I'll be glad to, Fred. I'll have my publisher, Ziff Davis, send you a copy of my book, The Dodgers and Me, tomorrow. No, not the book, Leo. I know the Dodgers are playing at Ebbets Field. I thought you might have a ticket. Oh, you... it just so happens I have two extra tickets. Eugene O'Neill couldn't make it. Here you are, Fred. Gosh, two tickets. Thanks a lot, Leo. Well, I'm having a beret made. I've got to get a fitting. So long, Fred. So long, Leo. <laughs> Well, Portland, the next day I took the two tickets and went over to Brooklyn to see the game. I got out of the subway. It se I seemed to be in the very heart of Brooklyn. Natives crowded around me in their quaint costumes, chattering in a strange tongue. I stopped a native girl and said, pardon me. The native girl replied, What's eating you, Jake? <laughs> can you tell me, uh, miss, can you tell me how to get to Ebbets Field? Ebbets Field? Yes. Latch on. Uh-huh. This is my lamb yum first. Yeah. You go down first, you see an oyster bar. Uh-huh. Cross the oyster bar is a mum picture. Yeah. Next to mum picture's side. Yeah. Go down side, 30 blocks. Yeah. That's 30 side and side. That's Ebbets Field. Well, I know, but where, where is Ebbets Field? Oh, you refugees. Now, look. <laughs> look, miss. Miss, by any chance, are you going, you going towards Ebbets Field? I noted a wolf in creep's clothing. Now, miss, <laughs> miss, I have an extra ticket to the game if you'd like oh, to. Oh, yeah, I'm calling a cop. Come back here, miss. Oh, miss, I have an extra ticket. Pardon, I have not Pardon me, mister. Uh, yes, sir? I heard you yelling. Are you selling tickets for the Dodgers game? No, not selling. No, I just happen to have an extra ticket here. I... I'll give you $5 for it. Oh, no, no. I, I couldn't take your money. But I insist. No, no. Here, you you take the ticket. Well, here's you're... the $5. So long. No, wait. Come here. I don't want your money. Hey, but... you there. Just a minute. Yes, officer. You got a license to sell baseball tickets? A license? <laughs> no. I thought so. A scalper. A scalper? That's the Joe Copper. He tried to give me the eye. Ah, molesting, too. <laughs> All right, come on, Chisler. But, officer, I can explain. Tell it to the judge. But I'm going to Ebbets Field. Oh, yeah? I'm Leo DeRoche's guest. He invited me to see his team. Never mind the team. I'm calling the wagon. Come on! Now, wait. Take your cold hand out of my collar, officer. You're chilling my Adam's apple, officer. And I... Well, Portland, the next morning I had to go to court. I called Leo DeRocher, and he came over to be my witness. We got to the Brooklyn court just in time. The judge was wrapping his gavel. Here yours, here yours. The next case. <laughs> next case. People of Brooklyn voices for Allen. The charge ticket speculating. Guilty or not guilty, Allen? Not guilty, Your Honor. That's what you think. Wait till I get going. <laughs> All right, who's the first witness? I am, Judge. What's your name? Charlie Hesselfinger. What happened, Charlie? <laughs> Why, Your Honor, I'm standing on White Labnia when this Geronimo give me the eye. <laughs> well, I throw him the chill. The next thing I know, he's hawking tickets to the Dodgers game. Your Honor, Your Honor, this is ridiculous. Honor in the court! Uh, Officer Clancy. I caught him two-handed, Your Honor. Two-handed? In one hand, he had a ticket. In the other hand, he was holding $5. Where's the evidence, Clancy? Right here. Here's the stub of the ticket. <laughs> well, uh, Clancy, how was the game? Oh, great. And here's the change from his $5. I had 17 hot dogs. <laughs> Alan, this evidence is incriminating. Your Honor, I can explain. Order in the court! Whereas, you open your trap once more, I'll throw me gravel in it. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Don't talk back. 
You New York wise guys has got to quit coming over here trying to smoke the good name of Brooklyn. But, Your Honor... Last week, a guy in a parking lot had a television set on top of a beer barrel. He was simulating the saloon. <laughs> now you come over with your ticket speculating. I ought to have you as your corpus. But, <laughs> your Honor, I have a witness. All right, where's your witness? He's right here. Tell the judge, Leo. Your Honor, I feel that the prosecution of this innocent man is a grave miscarriage of justice. Hey, just a moment, character. Who are you? <laughs> I'm Leo DeRosia. What's on your mind, bud? Well, I'd like to say a few words on Mr. Allen's behalf. Yes, tell the judge just what happened, Leo. Yeah, no perjury, neither. Well, uh, <laughs> Your Honor, uh, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. What is that, a weather report? <laughs> Your Honor, Your Honor, that's from the Merchant of Venice. I don't care if it's from Abraham and Strauss. This is the tickets. Your Honor, yeah, tell them where I got the tickets, Leo. Your Honor, I gave Mr. Allen those baseball yes. tickets. What are you, a printer? Oh, I'm a writer. <laughs> you're a writer? Oh, Clancy. Oh, uh, yeah, Your Honor. I think I got this bum trapped. <laughs> Give him a pencil and paper. Okay, Judge. All right, Mr. Writer. Now write something. Gladly, Your Honor. There you are. Hey, uh, look, Clancy, what is this? It's writing, Judge. <laughs> no kidding. I thought writing was bigger than that. No, Judge, that's writing. All right, Mr. Wise Guy, you wrote it. Now read it. What does it say? It says, uh, the Dodgers and me, on sale May 18th at all bookshops. Uh, did you hear that, Judge? The Dodgers are for sale. Yeah, that does it. <laughs> Alan is scalping tickets, and this con man is trying to sell the Dodgers. <laughs> Fancy, hand me me reservation book for Sing Sing. Your Honor, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Leo, tell him who you really are. But Fred, my literary standing. But Leo, Sing Sing. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, Your Honor, uh, I'm manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers. What did you say your name was again? DeRocher, Leo DeRocher. Leo DeRocher? How long you been managing the Dodgers? <laughs> Nine years. Oh, yeah? Where was your last year? <laughs> well, uh, it's a long story, Judge. Uh, part of the time, I was writing a book. And you say this year you're managing the Dodgers? Yes, Your Honor. Better you should start writing another book. <laughs> What do you mean? Well, what happened last Wednesday? The Giants beat us. What's the big idea, using 24 men? Well, uh, the Dodgers had a bad day, Your Honor. Ah, why don't you fix the lineup? What's wrong with the lineup? Well, you got Ward on first, Robinson on second, Cox on third. What lineup would you use? Well, first I put Stanky on second. Stanky's in Boston. What's Stanky doing in Boston? The Dodgers is playing in Brooklyn. (laughs) We sold Stanky to Boston. Brooklyn sold Stanky... Would the Mine Workers Union sell John L. Lewis? <laughs> I'm not managing the Mine Workers Union. Well, anyway, there's, there's one consolation. We still got Dixie Walker. <laughs> Judge, haven't you heard? Leo, you didn't. Dixie was sold to Pittsburgh. Leo, do we still have nine men left? What do you think we're playing with? You knucklehead bat boys. Okay, oh, Leo, but let's get them organized. Maybe we won't win the pennant, but at least we won't fall out of the league. Hey, Judge, Your Honor, what about my try? Ah, quiet. The court's busy trying to save the Dodgers. Now, Leo, here's your line. All right, Judge, who's on first? Now, what's on first? That's what I said. Who's on first? Who's on second? What's on first? Your Honor, what about me? You're on first. I'm now, listen, Leo. Leo. Quiet, Leo. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.